What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video, Leon Angus. And in this one, I'm gonna be talking about a case study that I'm currently running of scaling a niche website from $500 to $3,000 in just a matter of six months. So if any of you haven't seen my last video, I highly recommend that you go and check that out. I'll actually leave that in a card above this video. And what that case study is breaking down is the actual kind of plan that I had in place to start implementing on a brand new website. Now, things have changed just a little bit, which I'll explain in this video. And it's gonna be quite a few interesting parts of this video that's really, really gonna be helpful to so many of you watching because it's something that I just wanted to test out from a very long time ago. And I'll ex explain what that is in just a minute. But it's working out a lot better than I actually would have anticipated. And it's something that's not widely talked about across the internet. So you'll be interested in what that is um, in just a second. But what I'm actually gonna go through is everything that I've been doing across this site so far so you can see all of the steps that I've taken all of the actions and then we'll actually go in and drive into a bit more detail in each of those topics all right so let's get into it this video is sponsored by azoic.com if you're looking to monetize your website with ads and increase your user experience and perform the highest yielding revenues azoic is definitely a great way to go azoic is a certified Google publisher that uses machine learning to improve the performance of your website on a per visitor basis Click the link in the description or head over to ezoic.com to sign up today. All right, so the first thing that I actually did was upgrade the hosting. So I was currently with SiteGround, which was very good. I never had a problem with SiteGround. It's not like they weren't good or anything like that. They're just very good for if you're starting out. So, you know, I think you can have like, I don't remember how many sites, I think it's unlimited. I, I don't even remember. But when you start out, obviously SiteGround is very good because they're cheap and they have a good customer service. That or Bluehost, like they're usually the go-to places that people recommend, all right? You know, Site Run was very good. I, I still have like affiliate links to them in the description box and whatever else. I still highly recommend them. And their technical team was brilliant. So was their customer service. But when it came to actually site speed loading time, um, I needed to increase my page speed loading time. And in order to do that, I needed to move on to a more premium hosting service. So yeah, so I changed the hosting service and the one that I researched and found to be the best option for me was WPX Hosting. Now it's safe to say I can vouch for them in every shape and form. Their customer service is probably the best customer service I've ever experienced in, in just any business worldwide, globally. Like, I don't think I've ever experienced any better customer service than them. They absolutely take control and take care of everything. So if you want to do things yourself, you can. If you don't want to, the, the customer service does it. And they do just about everything. Like, anything that goes wrong with your site, honestly, it's safe to say they'll fix. Like, they go into your site, they log in, they fix things. Like, so you never have to worry, again, about any kind of problems or hit up coming up in the future that you might not be able to rectify or hiring like a, a technical specialist or developer or whatever they'll just they'll just take care of it and one of the most important parts about changing to WPX is the site speed loading time it's absolutely astronomical like the difference is black and white so prior to using WPX I was getting loading times of under three seconds per page purely because I was optimizing my images and so on and so forth and all of that now I'm getting without any optimization or anything and and, you know quite a, a more heavy website um, I'm using about 16 plugins at the moment and before I think I only had about maybe about nine or something like that so it's a bit more heavy in, in regards to the plugins that I'm using the site overall but I always recommend keeping it under 20 yeah basically I was loading under three seconds and then on average without doing anything I'm now loading under two seconds but once I implemented that with uh, w3 uh, total cash which they recommend because I was using WP fastest cash but they recommend w3 total cash I integrated it with that and then oh, they've also got a CDN um, I'm getting under one second loading time so I'm getting like you know a, a seventh of a second and things like that so my page speed loading time is ridiculously fast like I'm getting under a second on the majority of my articles all right so that is number one um, the first thing that I done that's made a massive difference the next thing I've done was change the theme so I was currently using Akabadu which is a great theme by all means which was income schools theme and I highly recommend that theme for if you're starting out with a blog but the only thing is you're quite limited to what you can do with it they've already done all the hard work for you so they've set up all the schema they've set up you know all the SEO stuff and it's very easy to integrate with like Google Analytics and Search Console and 
everything's just super easy. Search Console, sorry, you don't integrate with that, but everything's just very easy. And the way the theme's set up, like if you wanna have like a hero image or you wanna have like smaller images that go off to specific articles, you can have that and it looks nice. The only downside is your site looks like every other uh, site that uses Akabadu theme. So you almost look identical to Income School's themes. And what's funny is I actually dropped into like a live stream. I forgot the guy's name, Nick, oh, I forgot his name, Ron Stefanski. And I dropped into his thing and I, I dropped one of my sites and someone said, hey, he's just copying Income School and my content was completely unique and completely different. But it's purely just because the theme was the same. So people thought that, you know, I was just emulating exactly what they're doing. All right, so I changed the theme and the theme that I've actually chosen now is Astra theme and Astra theme is absolutely brilliant. I've loved every part of it. It's super fast loading, like so it's a very light theme. I went for the pro version, so I think it was like $250 and then you get like unlimited installs. So I can in install it on as many sites as I want. Now, what was funny is because as soon as I made that purchase, I think the very next day, they sent out an email saying, oh, there's a discount and it would drop to like 170 or 160. So I lost like $70. Now I was thinking the normal common thinking, like, should I just read refund it and do it again and then I thought nah you know what there's no point because that's just like you know they deserve it it's a good theme anyway so it's worth the 250 by all means and Astra theme is absolutely brilliant so I've been able to customize that but then what I actually did is um, I went and ordered Thrive themes so a lot of people don't recommend Thrive purely because your page speed loading times um, can be dramatically hurt by using a page builder like that so a lot of people actually um, use in conjunction with Astra they'll use Elementor now Elementor Elementor is brilliant by all means. I'm not taking that away. The only thing what I really wanted to focus on is the email marketing side of the site because you guys know that I'm also going to be running an email campaign with this site to increase the earnings. So because of that, I need to um, use Thrive Leads and Thrive Leads is brilliant. Like the way it can capture leads and split test and all of that is very, very good. I've used it on multiple sites in the past. And then obviously that also integrates with uh, Thrive landing pages, which is brilliant for me because potentially in the long run, once I've done and said all of this, um, you know, I, I might even start testing out some ads on the site. I'm gonna eventually try and flip the site, but if, if we can add as many um, income sources to the site as possible, you know, so it's very stable, um, it might be more attractive to a buyer. Obviously at the same time, you don't wanna saturate too much because then, you know, that can exhaust the options of, of monetizing the site. I've also built um, a homepage, that's a portal page. So before what I used to have was just like the blog reel in all of the posts, yeah, um, just showing up. So when you go into the site, there's like latest posts showing up. Now I've actually got like strategically uh, placed articles that go to my top of silo articles. So if you don't know what siloing is, it's basically um, setting up your pages in, in, a, in a way that passes uh, authority to the most difficult pages that, that also bring the most traffic and, and income. So for example, if you're going to target like, you know, say for example, like some buyer intent keywords, you might have best, like it's a dog website. So best dog harness yeah is at the top of the silo because that's like the very much hardest keyword but then underneath that as a sub kind of page would have a uh, best harness for golden retrievers best harness for winter best harness for this so all of those sub pages would then link up to that main page and what that does is all those pages are passing authority up to that page and then you link back from the main page to those sub articles and what it does is it basically creates this kind of feedback loop that passes what we call link juice um, throughout the article so that's what I've been doing anyway and so far because my site has about it was about 30% buyer intent and 70% um, informational I believe so I'm now trying to make it 80% buyer intent so I'm going super heavy on buyer intent articles I'm spending about 80% of my time on that and then I'm still trying to put like you know two articles in every 10 to be informational so I don't want to completely just do like best 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 and reviews and whatever else so I'm trying to keep a balance but I'm also trying to, to kind of flip it on its head because now I'm going to be applying you know heavy uh, backlink strategy to the site to uh, improve the rankings and target those very um, you know difficult and uh, higher level competition keywords the other thing I did after changing the theme and also adding uh, thrive landing pages and creating a home page is I then got a new logo 
logo for the site. And what was interesting is the reason why I got a new logo is because I actually changed the domain. So this is the part that I was talking about that's gonna be super interesting to everyone. One of the things that I always wondered is how does changing a domain affect a site? Because just say for example, the site before was limited to golden retrievers. Then now in order to expand the site, I need to target everything about dogs, you know? So I have to really expand, yeah? Because I've exhausted quite a lot of information and keywords on golden retrievers, especially the buyer intent stuff. So now I'm thinking, all right, how do I expand this site and target a wider variety of keywords? Well, if I had a domain that was more general, then I'd be able to do that. So I was thinking, should I just go at the top of this site, like um, opportunity and just go like to, I don't know, like just pets altogether, you know, or animals. Then I thought, you know what, that's too big. I still want to keep it niche down, but not as niche as I was. So what I did is I actually changed the domain. So the site has moved from one name, which is particularly about golden retrievers to now just a general dog website, all right? So this now opens doors for me to target things about German shepherds, you know, um, uh, poodles, like whatever the heck I wanna target, I can probably do, all right? So the benefit of that is obviously I'm able to now target these high buyer intent, uh, best buy keywords that are generally about dogs opposed to golden retrievers. Yeah, so I'm naturally uh, rolling out that content and, and, and showing Google that, that I'm about that, all right? So what's interesting is what has the effects been on the site so far? from me doing that. I was doing a crap ton of research around the internet trying to find information and it's very far and few between that you find videos about doing redirects. So first of all, you need to do a 301 redirect. That's for a permanent redirect. Many of you may know that. You also get 302s when you're temporarily moving um, you know, a link or page or domain or whatever and then bringing it back. So what I done is a 301 permanent, but what's so good is because I'm now with WPX, they absolutely done everything for me, but they do charge a fee for that. So to actually move it all because of the size of the site I think it was 900 and something megabytes when I tried to migrate it with all-in-one SEO before I was going to then do the redirect I actually um, saw that in order to upload a site that big because they only give you like 32 MB or something that I needed to pay like $67 then I thought oh well WPX were going to charge me I think it's like $97 plus VAT 20% to just do everything to redirect it and everything and they'll do it from the HT access file they done that and it was brilliant within like a about two hours, the site, if you even type the old site now, it's like switch straight away because it's doing it straight from the from the HT access file. Any any URL, any page, any backlink, everything is all passed. And I, I went and did my research to find out if it also passes link juice and authority, and it does. And not only has that been interesting in regards to, um, because it passes your rankings, everything. And what's interesting is, um, so say for example, I had an article on best dog collar for golden retrievers or best whatever, now the new site domain forward slash best dog collar for golden retrievers now has the same rankings as the old one it's crazy this all happened i only done this about three days ago something like that and what's happened is i've actually got a screenshot that i'm going to show you right here as you can see um there's been an entire eight articles that have already caught rankings here on this new domain it's brand new um i just purchased the domain and um, it was a premium domain i think it cost me about hundred dollars because it was a good name it's a very short name catchy and um it's already getting the rankings and if you actually take a look at the other screenshot which i'm going to show you here the top site that's lost 269 today this morning you can see the authority on that's 27 on the page authority 16 on the domain authority and then the bottom one you can see has gained 158 and it's got 45 words that i'm tracking well the top one is my old site and the bottom one is the new one so you can see that it's actually just going and recycling from that old site it's coming straight off and then all the rankings are going to the new one and what's more interesting is if we actually take a look at this other screenshot we can see that the domain authority in three days has gone from one domain authority and no zero i think it was zero and zero whatever it is but it's gone up to three domain authority and and a page authority of four and that's happened in three days so if it's passing authority that quick i think within like about a month or so it should really pass like all of that that authority over to the site in regards to traffic that's been exactly the same because all that's happening is when someone clicks my old uh, website in google's index it then redirects them to the new one so it shows them the exact same article 
but with obviously my new theme and with the new domain name. So they, they probably don't even notice it because it's that instant, like it's, it's, it's super quick. And I actually tested my page speed loading times. It's still under one second, even with the redirect and everything. So I don't know how that's working, like in regards to if the actual page speed tools are act picking up like redirects and all that stuff. I don't know. I'm so happy, honestly, like because I wanted to do this to know that it's possible because you can go and read information and try different things and all of this. But now if I actually attack any niche in the future, like, and this is where your experience starts, really starts to, you know, you start to gather experience in these things. And this is why you have to try things, guys. Yeah, so like if I ever attack any niche or I'm helping someone or, you know, I'm giving some kind of a consult, consult, consultation and they ask, oh, can I, can I redirect it? Can I expand it? I'm going to say yes, because you can, you know, and it's going to pass all that authority. Yes, it can be a little bit of work, but it's worth it, you know, because if you can then expand your business um, quite dramatically, I should say, I've now got Yoast installed because before when you're using Akabadu, you can't use Yoast because it duplicates all of your information. So on the database, so all of like the archive pages and your meta description, descriptions and all of that stuff gets duplicated because Akabadu already has it in, in, in built and then obviously Yoast is, is adding it onto the site. There are ways of actually re removing the duplication but that's only temporarily until the next update because Josh Coop which is a friend of mine you guys might have seen that he, he has a website uh, about Akabadu theme.com or something like that. It's very helpful in Akabadu if you want to go check out his website. Yeah he, he's got like a temporary fix but it doesn't it doesn't it only works until the next update which is not that good you can't be constantly doing that when you're trying to do other things you know and focus on content so i'm now using yoast and it allowed me to know index um, all of my date archives category uh, archives post tags uh, post formats um, author archives so all of those archives i don't want google crawling them i don't need them in the index result but they are there for if i want to send like you know uh, readers to those areas yeah um, one of the other things is i had to reset up um, my search console so the only thing that i had to do because uh, wpx done everything for me the only thing i actually had to physically do was set up search console again because that you have to verify in a uh, with a txt uh, dns file um like it gives you like a, a string of code and you, you put that into your a name servers and google analytics you don't have to set that back up because the tracking id that it uses when you migrate the old site to the new one it actually has all that information in there so that was already in there so i didn't have to reset up google analytics or anything else i had to set up new tracking obviously for the new domain because the new domain is different so i had to set up rank tracking for for that but it, because of my plan and how many uh, keywords I can track at the moment on key search I think I'm limited to, uh, I could only add like 45 of them or something like that so as those other ones drop off I'm just gonna then delete them and then I'll obviously you know move them to the new one the only downside is that they, and now I lose all the the history of those um, keywords because it shows me like the rankings of where they've been moving over the last six months or a year which is great I can download it if I really want to and have it in a spreadsheet or something like that. So I might do that just to keep it there and export it. Key search is great for that. Or obviously, you know, I can just start tracking it from new, which I probably will do anyway, because I ain't really too bothered. All right, so moving forward, the next thing I did was I ordered eight new pieces of content. Now these are all top of silo articles and I'm ordering them from iWriter. Now people might, I've had even my friend, um, you know, you know who you are. A lot of people don't like iWriter, but I've got like a technique of finding uh, good writers. And honestly, um, they're very good. The ones that I'm using, like, you know, and what I would recommend is only use two to three writers for a website maximum. So don't use many, many different people. Keep it to two or three. Note down who they are, but I'll give you a little insight of finding a good writer. You want to look for someone that has probably over like a thousand different jobs that they've done on iWriter, you want to see consistency that they're working all the time. So go and check out their author profile when you actually, you can search for authors, like find writers at the top. And then you want to check that they've got repeat customer rate of at least 40%. So that means out of every 10 customers that came through, four of them came back. That's a good indication that they're a good writer, but you want to find them specifically to your niche. So you can find the best writers for your niche very quickly on iWriter. A lot of people don't actually tell you that and they don't know how to find the writers. So that's what I do. And when you do that, I guarantee you're probably going to find a good person to write for you. Now, my writers are very, very good. I actually give them a very in-depth content brief and that includes all of the subheadings as well. So a lot of you are probably just giving them a piece of content, like a keyword to write and the word count. I don't actually do that. I give them the word count. I give 
them the objective. I give them as much information as I can, so that way it makes their job easier. All they do is they essentially go in and fill in all the blanks. They've got the exact objective. I give them also a link to an example article within it. And I do this in a Google Doc. So that makes it very easy because you can hyperlink in Google Docs. For each specific keyword or article that I'm requesting them to write, all I do on iWriter is I basically, inside of that, the information or brief or whatever, I just tell them check source requirements. And in source requirements, I've got the shareable link to my Google Doc file. So I take them straight off iWriter. And then from there, they've got my whole in-depth brief, giving them all the information. Like I'm even telling them, you know, the products that they find on Amazon or wherever, whatever site, they have to link out to them and the products have to have at least a four-star review with at least 30 feedback, all in the content brief. So they've got a clear idea. So when they end up with this list of, of content, and then I give them the objective for each specific job. So you're helping the reader to make a purchase on XYZ, or you're helping the reader to find out XYZ. By the time they leave, they need to know this. Even the conclusions, I basically give them tips on there, like and tease the reader and make all the skim readers find out what they missed out on here. You just need to be as in depth as possible. Now, it doesn't mean that um, the, the, all the writers are good on iWrite or, or, they, or they're all bad or whatever, that I'm not about that. All it is, is I think if you're not spending um, as much money, then you have to put more work. Like there has to be that kind of balance with anything that you do. So if you're not gonna spend like two, three hundred dollars on an article, then you need to understand you're gonna have to put more work in. It's either gonna require your work or your or your money. Yeah, it's one of the two. Yeah, your time or your money. So I put more time in, you know, so I go and actually do all the research like as if I was gonna write the article and put all the subtopics together and then I put it to them. So that way they just literally have to fill in the blanks and they've got a complete brief on exactly what to fill in. And sometimes I'm doing every single subheading on the article. I'm talking from the H2s to the H3s and 4s and everything, you know, so that's how in depth I can go. And then you'll realize is that when they do it and they incorporate it in the way that you've told them in the brief and whatever else, it, it, it just naturally flows how you want it to you know and then you tell them that you know in the introduction I give them a clear with bullets okay your intro needs to confirm readers in the right place tell them what they're gonna get today or leave with tell them what they aim to gain from from reading this or all that kind of stuff you know so I'm not gonna share all that and if I do share that content brief the in-depth one I've shared free ones before on the channel if I share that um, very in-depth one then I will charge for it maybe like ten dollars or something like that because it's a game changer honestly a disabled is Zoe I just wanted to say whilst we're here is um, a great service and the reason why I disabled Ezoic is purely because right now um, the way that Ezoic works it's an AI so it, you know they actually um, you place placeholders on your site for where you want to put the ads and whatever else and then from there Ezoic will go to testing but what the downside is of that is if you actually change your theme it then has to your placeholders have to be replaced and it has to start testing again to find the optimal kind of spots and, and optimal performance yeah but not only have I done that I've now changed the domain so I actually have to register the new domain on Ezoic. So I just disabled it whilst I'm doing all this hectic stuff. And then once everything has kind of settled down, I'm gonna reinstall Ezoic. I'm actually gonna add uh, the new domain to Ezoic today. So I'll do that later on today. And then I'll start like actually running Ezoic on the, on the site again, probably next week sometime. The other thing I did is I switched all of my uh, money content to uh, pages. So before I had them as all posts, like all of my articles were just posts, yeah. And what that does is it just puts puts it into a blog reel. Now that's good, you know, obviously I'm using a different method now. So with the method that I'm using, um, you can get hierarchy from the uh, page to page, yeah? And the benefit of that is obviously it, it gives Google clear information on what page is at the top of the silo. So you can select parent pages, but then have the hierarchy inside of the URL as well. So that page essentially sits above the other one and you don't have this flat kind of structure that you would get with the blog reel. And the other thing is, is if I have just a blog section of the site now, obviously that will only contain my informational articles and those articles only link amongst each other and to the articles relevant that I want it to on the, on the money side of things. But if we actually take a look at some of the actions I've taken on the site, I've got a screenshot here and you can see that I've ran the site through Ahrefs, um, I've no indexed all the pages, no followed, um, you know, like all the contact page and privacy policy from the home page. So that's not you know, letting any link juice escape. I've also fixed any orphan pages because I had a few that never had any links coming into them so I fixed all of that fixed all the 404 errors 
created a homepage link with URL destination redirect because I needed to do that as well. Like basically I needed to create a link that goes to my actual www dot website internally. I've also done an audit. I've got like image alt text that I needed to put in, but I haven't done them all. I've done a few of them. I changed the homepage to portal, keyword research for the silos. So I've got all the keywords that I'm gonna be targeting. I've already done all that. Change menu for simple silos. So now before I used to have like all the actual subcategories on, on the site across the actual top of menu. But now what I've done is I've, I've just got like um, home and then reviews and under reviews, I've got each top of silo. So like, you know, dog harness, blah, 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 all of that. And then blog. And then at the bottom, I've got the contact and all that stuff. What's happened to the earnings on Amazon? What's funny is because nothing has changed because it's just making a quick redirect to the new domain and the pages are exactly the same. They still contain all the same information. The site has not been affected at all. Zero effect on Amazon earnings. So that's another thing that I think is a bonus to know is that if you switch your domain, you have nothing to worry about on the earnings. That's going to continue. It's only obviously if you have advertising and um, then that's going to be affected in a big way. And then what am I going to be doing moving forward next? I'm going to start dropping in some guest posts into the site. I'm going to be doing about two to 10 per month because based on uh, the training that I'm taking part in now, you do it based on the amount of traffic that the site's getting. So because I've moved it to a new domain, my main focus is really to build up trust. So I'm going to register the site with Google My Business and run it, run it through a few citations as well. So local directories for that niche. And that way, you know, it's going to establish some level of trust. The other thing I'm going to do is take advantage of iWriter's deal. They've currently got, if you deposit $500 into content on their platform, then they give you a free DA50 link. So I'm going to take advantage of that because I'm going to, you know, I've probably spent like over $500 recently. Like I don't even know on, just on content, but altogether I spent 929 pounds and 39 pence. That's in pounds, but in dollars, I think I've probably spent about $1,200 on, on this project so far. So that's how much I've spent just on making this happen so far, you know, so I've spent a, a little bit of money. I'm going to set up some author pages. So before what I had on the author pages is just like an author page that was just basic. Now I've actually got all the information what I'm going to do. I'm going to link to the social accounts of those authors and I'm also going to have those authors with each company emails. So say for example, the website is at Google. Let's just use for an example. I'm going to have like, if there was like a writer, say for example, Elizabeth, Elizabeth at google.com. Like I'm going to have that because you can create that with your, with your hosting account and on the emails, you can have several different emails for each name. No one's ever going to use them really, but you just have them on the site to build up that trust with Google and have those authors emails on the site. Um, the other thing is I'm also going to link to those authors author archives. Now I've actually de-indexed them in Google, but the search engines don't need to see them. That's purely for readers. So if a reader comes through and they like an article from that person and they look at the author um, box at the bottom, they might click it and go check out that person's author profile from the author box on, the, on an article that they see. Then they can obviously get access to all of the rest of those person's articles. So that's very good. And I'm going to have a meet the team page. And on that page, basically, I'm going to have links to each author um, profile there. So then that author profile has all the rest of the details of the author, you know, but that basically is going to all be like a bunch of different authors on a meet the team page. So it looks very good, very um, genuine. I'm also going to add schema to all of the pages. So on the old site, I obviously started adding schema, which is on the new one on some of the pages, but I need to finish that. So I'm going to add schema to all of the pages and currently doing it manually, but I think I might just use a plugin for that. I'm not sure. Like, we're going to see how that goes. Obviously, I'm going to begin um, siloing the, the, the money pages as I order more content and I've got more content for those subsections. I'm then going to start, you know, contextually linking these articles strategically. Now, there's no evidence to say that this absolutely really helps your rankings, but because of the level of uh, difficulty of the keywords that I'm targeting, how I want the link juice to be passed around, this is the reason why I'm doing it. And just to put it out there for anyone that does say that silos don't work, the only reason um, that you're really doing siloing is not so much for it, it results. It's like an indirect um, effect on your rankings. But the main thing is to pass the link juice. So you're strategically building pipelines from different articles to pass authority to those pages. So when you actually send a link to like, say, for example, one of your sub pages or one of them gain an organic link that then also um, helps, you know, all of the rest of the articles within that section as well. And obviously, if you're 
you're just linking around anyway, you're, you're gonna pass link around your entire site. But the only downside to that is obviously, you know, you've also got something called trust flow. So depending on how far a link comes from the source, if it goes through your best buy, like for dog harnesses, for golden retrievers, and then it ends up at best buy for dogs, and then, and then it ends up on like something like best, I'm looking at an umbrella here for my lighting, but best umbrella for dogs. By the time it gets to that article, the link juice may have potentially faded. So who knows if it's passing the same level of authority through all those pages. I think that if you keep it close knit and tight inside of that silo, then you'll have a good. I mean, I have like a subsection as well. I actually want to throw up a screenshot here of um, my sub page of where I'm going to basically have all of the links to all of the subcategories within the site. You can see how I'm going to section them. So that would be like a portal page, a sub portal page. So I'm going to have the home page, but then when people click reviews, they're going to be taken to this sub portal page. It's going to look something like this Matthew Woodward's example here. And that's basically gonna go off to all of the other articles on the site. So that's how I work that. And that's about it really. So I'm gonna be doing some link insertions as well. Some people call them niche edits and whatever else. And uh, I'll be following Matt Diggity's backlink blueprint for that, as I said. So that's about it guys. So, so far I'm very happy with the way it's going. I think it's gonna affect it like the case study in quite a way because obviously I've changed the domain, you know, so it's gonna slow things down a little bit. But one of the most interesting parts about this is number one, even if I don't sell the site by the end of the year, obviously I won't have hit target, but if I can sell it and get it to 3K even two months after or whatever, and I still sell it, then I've still achieved something. It still helped me to push for something. But secondly, what's interesting is that, that you're getting to see the transition of the site, like moving from one domain to the other and seeing me potentially target more difficult keywords and a wider variety of keywords. So we're gonna see how that all pans out because maybe I don't gain rankings for those keywords and I can't do it and whatever else. And also all of my content I never mentioned is uh, optimized by Surfer. So it's based on Surfer surfers specification. So I'm going into the content editor and uh, drumming in a keyword and then doing all the competition analysis in the same way based on traffic and correlating uh, websites. And then after that, basically uh, based on the word count, I'm adding like 10 or 20% depending on the type of topic that it is. And then after that, I'm also, you know, using the same amount of images that they recommend and so on and so forth and all of that. So that's how I'm uh, going and creating the articles in the first place. So I know the type of word count that I need to be targeting because what I was doing before is I was taking the entire top 10 results and then averaging them out and then adding 10 or 20 percent which works very good but with Surfer you're able to identify key websites that you need to pay attention to the ones that are actually ranking with content because a lot of the time you might find that other sites are just ranking purely because they have authority and if these videos are a bit too technical for you guys then just let me know if you want it to be stepped back at a bit more slowed down and basic simple information then let me know because I know that I've been very technical in the last couple of videos but it's purely because of the things that I'm applying and testing out on my site and obviously I come from a mechanical background so a lot of you might not know that and this is why I'm more attracted to technical SEO opposed to just doing SEO and content friendly stuff you know my content strategy and all of that stuff I'm going to show you guys in, in 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 the next couple of videos I'll do like a content video and then I'll also do a video on like how to do your anchor text and also doing your uh, your outbound links you know and things like that like how to strategically do things so you know that you're doing it the right way all right so that's it anyway guys i hope you enjoyed the video if you did make sure to smash that like it's the second video in the uh, case study i'll be reporting as much as possible ideally once per month but i just thought i'll do this one because i made such a dramatic change to the actual case study all right and um, if you are new make sure to subscribe because i regularly push out videos just like this one so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one peace